Okay, here we are in a blank After Effects project. So let's go ahead and bring in our image sequences and our other assets um, that we already have created. So I'm gonna go and grab those folders from before. And um, it's easiest just to drag them in one at a time. And the reason for that is because you'll see here that um, they're not really named properly and the frame rate is wrong. And so you wanna go and maybe just um, copy the file name um, and then we're just gonna press return with this uh, selected and then I'm gonna paste that in. And then, uh, so it's gonna name that for us. And then we can right click, go to interpret footage, hit main, and then change 30 to 24. So this is the frames per second that we rendered from Blender, which is 24. It defaults in After Effects at 30, so we're gonna redo that. Okay, so now this is ready to use in After Effects. And again, this is not uh, an image. This is treating all of the images together as if they were footage. So that's gonna be really useful for us. Um, and just to prove that, I can drop that down here in the project um, comp. So if you drop it in this blank area, it creates a new composition. And this is gonna be our main composition where we do all of our editing. Um, if you don't see this project area and you, you can't drag the folder in, um, you could um, right click and import uh, a file. And if you do it this way, um, so let's, uh, for instance, maybe we'll grab uh, this one here. When you select the first one, um, it's gonna have ping sequence checked. So if you click open, it's going to bring all of them in as a ping sequence, which is nice. Um, so let's just go back there and we want to uh, just copy that folder. Um, we're gonna press return on the keyboard to go into edit mode for that and then paste that in. And now we have that um, uh, name appropriately. And so we can right click, interpret the footage and uh, type 24 here. I'm gonna be using a shortcut from now on, and that's gonna be, um, I believe that's option, command G on a Mac, and it should tell you what it is on Windows so that you can use it yourself. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and just drop in some folders. I find this is easier than going through the um, import dialog box. So I'm gonna copy that, press return, paste, and um, here it is, 30 frames per second. So we're gonna do um, option command G, 24, okay. Okay, I'm gonna copy that. Okay, option command G. All right, that's 24 frames per second as well. And we're gonna just do the last one here. Press return to copy that. Press return to edit this. Option Command G. All right, so we brought them all in. We've changed the frame rate to 24 frames per second. Now we can start adding them to the timeline so we can edit these things together. Um, I am going to um, just add a few here. So let's let's also change the length of the composition. So let's go up to composition settings, composition settings. Um, right now, six seconds six seconds is not going to be enough. I think I need something like twenty. Oh, there we go. All right. So you can see um, the whole area is visible. And you can actually drag on this clip. Um, the way that this works is you can trim footage by clicking and dragging on the beginning or the end. Um, it still kind of shows you all of the available footage that you're not using um, as sort of a ghosted area. Um, so just kind of be aware it's, it's a little bit different than other software you may have used. Um, okay, and let's just drag in the other camera sequences. 
okay and so I think I want this uh, to maybe go to there if we turn on snapping it might be a bit easier for you to um, snap or if you um, press the plus key on your keyboard while hovering over the timeline you can get in much closer and get more accurate um, playhead placement okay so now that this is cropped in you can see once we go here it switches because now this layer is visible so I'm going to actually spread these out. And then we'll reorder them. Um, so now I'm just making editing decisions like any filmmaker might make when they're um, given um, footage to work with. So um, you may have already have these edits done depending on your workflow um, coming out of Blender. Uh, but this one requires a lot more editing. Um, so what I'm going to do is spend some time um, positioning these um, later to kind of get it perfect. For now, I'm just going to roughly do it. Um, so I think I want the dog to come out, the um, ship to come down like this, and then I want that slow motion to come into play. So let's find out where that is. There we go. So I'm going to drag this one up here to be in that order. I'm just going to try to collapse that a bit so we get some more space. OK, so we're going to bring this maybe over to here. Actually, we can put that above. There we go. So I need to actually kind of stop time here. Um, there's no easy way to split these. You're going to have to duplicate the layer. So I'm going to do Command D with the layer selected. And now it duplicates that layer, and I can move this around. Um, so I'm going to crop this in. And I'm going to crop that one back to here. And so now I can uh, maybe drag that below so I can kind of see um, the cascade of frames that I have. And okay. So I actually don't think I'm going to use this shot at all. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for now. And then uh, maybe bring this one back here. OK, so this is kind of how it began, right? So this is at the beginning, and then this is at the end. That's that. That sequence, that extra sequence that I did outside of the main animation timeline. Um, so frame 144 to 192. And so that's kind of, I wanted sort of this moment where you could kind of see or kind of reflect on the fact that the, um, that our dog character was taken up into the spaceship. So let's duplicate this. And we can, we've done a pretty good job looping that animation where we can duplicate it here and just kind of make it go a couple times. There's different ways to do this in After Effects. The easiest and most direct way is just to duplicate the layers and move them into place. OK, so that's the whole animation. Let's uh, go ahead and play it back. If you go up to Preview here in the top right, um, if you click Cache before playback, when you press Play, it will go ahead and cache the whole timeline here. And then it will play it back at the proper speed. So let's wait for that to happen. OK, here we go. All right, so I think it went a little bit too fast there at the in the middle. So I think we need more time. Um, so what we'll do is just drag select. Uh, 
Okay, drag select, if that does not work for you, you can actually just uh, shift select here um, in uh, the main layer area and we can just move these back. All right, so I think it has to happen maybe somewhere around here. So we want this one to line up with here because I think it's hard to see through this cone. I probably should have um, disabled the visibility when rendering this particular scene so that I can see inside of it. Um, but I think that our dog is right around here. Um, so with that, I'm just gonna kind of line these up so there's no missing frames in between, okay. And so let's just play that back. I think it's gonna be a better in the beginning maybe goes a little bit too fast as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up later, but I do wanna show how to add audio. Okay, so if I right click, um, if we do new folder, we're gonna call this audio. And we're actually gonna put all of our um, shots in a new folder called um, viewport renders, okay. There we go. Uh, let's go here to the uh, folder. I've actually gone ahead and grabbed some online. So some good resources, Free Music Archive. Um, the website's a little bit hard to navigate right now. They're going through some changes, but if you actually click through these categories and genres, you'll be able to get to some music they have. Um, I found some space themed um, audio. That sounds kind of weird, so I'm gonna play that. Okay, it's just kind of this weird UFO sound. And then I've got um, some different sound effects from freesound.org. This is a great website um, and a lot of their, basically everything on here is Creative Commons or public domain. So I'm gonna click through some of these sound effects. Okay. All right, so that's sort of an ambience scene, uh, sound. I've also got a dog barking, um, but these are all of the um, audio tracks here that I'm gonna bring in, and I'm going to just drop them here in the um, project folder and just drag those down into audio so that they're nice and organized. Okay, so I've got our viewport renders here and our audio here. Let's go ahead and bring in the ambience first. Okay, I'm gonna just drag that down here. I like to keep the audio at the bottom. And so let's just take a listen. in general my animation is pretty fast um, but uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll go through and kind of clean this up um, after we add some of these tracks here so let's just see what this one sounds like so I think this is gonna be the tractor beam sound um, if you want to you can actually unfurl these to see the waveform so you can actually see how loud it's gonna get so you can time that so I think um, when the tractor beam comes down, I want this to be kind of loud. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just crop that in and move that to there. So you can see this loud sound happens right when the tractor beam comes down. So let's just play that. All right, so this happens so fast that we don't really see anything. Okay, I'm gonna shift select these. I'm gonna move these over. And let's see if we can't get. A little bit. 
bit better timing there. Okay. And so that means we're going to have to move our sound over to, to line up with that cut. Or actually, I'm going to line that up with this. So let's let's move that back. So you see this blue line is where the playhead is, and that's when this comes down here. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and just play. Okay, and then it goes away. So now we need to actually make this quieter. So I could crop it or I could change the audio level. So I'm going to click on this stopwatch and that's going to bring up keyframing. And so it adds a keyframe. I'm going to go another frame or two over. We're going to add a keyframe and then I'm going to go. Um, and just, it looks like I've turned off some options here. So this icon here is going to bring back my decibel levels. So I'm going to drag this down to be very quiet. And then we're going to go to this one here. I'm going to make sure that this one's set at zero. Um, Trying to take a look at why that's happening. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off and try this again. Okay. There we go. Um, I think that might have been a weird glitch because I had that toggled off, but I'm um, not really sure. So let's just uh, see what happens. So the sound is going to fade out as the tractor beam goes away. And we're actually going to have the sound um, maybe be keyframed here as well. So we're going to keyframe this to be on. So if you use these little arrow buttons, it pops you over to the next keyframe. So you don't have to try to keep lining it up. So let's try that. All right. So now it kind of totally uh, the sound kind of aligns with that and it makes it feel like it's making noise. Right. So that's what. Um, adding these sound effects is all about. Okay, I've got a few more here. There's uh, a dog barking. Okay, and so let's just play this back. So it doesn't make sense that it's the dog still barking now. So we want to maybe go ahead and. Uh, keyframe these audio levels. So let's just keyframe this here and then I'm going to drop that down. There we go. And I probably need to maybe turn that totally off there. Okay. And all right. So um, I could do some more work here. Um, but what I want to do is um, go ahead and actually add some intro kind of titles. So let's um, let's go ahead and, and move this back a few seconds. And I am going to use the the text tool. Um, so you see everything's kind of moved back and there's a void now. Um, so what I can do is just go here and, and make a title. I'm not going to do the, the same amount of work I did for the, the other one I showed. I'm just going to call this Oops, not fiend, friend. There we go. And let's center align this particular title under paragraph. We can go ahead and center that. And if we um, just use the, the cursor tool here with this selected. Uh, we can go to align and then align that here to the middle. Uh, we could use that um, for the vertical line as well. And so that's going to work. I think, you know, I, I had added and made it an extra thing, but I'm going to leave that off for now. Um, and then we want to essentially crop this back here because it, it adds it to the entire timeline. Um, and. So now I need to animate its opacity so it fades in and out. So I'm going to go down to transform, 
gonna untwirl these opacity is what's gonna enable us to fade to black. So let's go here to the beginning, add a keyframe, fade to zero here. Now you can see the opacity fades in and then we can click a keyframe, move to the end here and then fade this out. So let's just play that back. And it had to do a cache preview here, so. Okay, so one of the nice things to do is overlap sound. Um, that helps introduce what's coming next. So if we actually take this sound clip and move this to the beginning, um, I think you'll find that it helps tie things together better. So let's just... Okay, that was the dog barking, although that could be funny too. Um, maybe we'll actually just do the ambience here. Okay, and then the only other thing we really have is that big, um, or when it, actually we have two more things. When it flies away, it makes a whoosh noise. So let's bring that down. And let's just take a look at the waveform to see when the big sound happens. There we go. Ah, that works pretty well. We can adjust it. I think that's even better. Okay, so we're gonna leave that there. And then I think I think I've got another one here that is going to be kind of a bigger sound. Okay, um, sometimes the audio uh, waveform takes a while to load. Okay, so now we want to just key this down because it uh, should kind of get quiet once it leaves. Here we go. Let's try this. And actually, I want that to maybe happen sooner. It should be really loud right about now. Um, so we're gonna maybe key this so it, there's no abrupt sound. And, and then we could fade the audio out around here. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> It's really coming together now with all of these sounds layered together and kind of the audio levels tuned. Um, it's kind of feeling like uh, an animation. I think the only thing we have now is to add some credits. So let's um, let's go ahead and um, collapse these and use the text tool. Just Mike did it. All right, those are my credits. I'm just kidding. Um, you want to do something like animation by your darn name. Okay. Um, probably choose something that doesn't look like a title, although we can keep the same type, kind of text here. Um, maybe I'll, I'll do something less bold. This is um, totally up to your preference. Um, as long as it's readable, um, you want to do the same sort of, let's organize this here. You want to do the same sort of fade in, fade out. And, you know, we could actually loop this until we run out of timeline. So we can. So let's let's remove that layer, and we'll have the um, credits fade in here over top. 
uh, overlapping things I think really helps tie things together um, shot to shot. Okay, and I'm just gonna change the opacity here. Okay, so there's kind of an abrupt off, right? That's we, what we want to do is fade this last one out. So we're going to go and select this last set of footage and just turn on keyframing and just drop the opacity here at the end. And now we can get a nice fade out into credits. All right, so let's uh, play this. We're still getting some sound um, from one of the other, um, I think it's this one. We we'll want to make sure that our last keyframe here is actually turned off. So let's just eliminate that. And if it ends too abruptly, um, you can actually add an intermediate, an intermediate keyframe so that it doesn't fade out too quickly here. Um, all right. So I, you know, I think there's probably some issues with my looping animation, but it's good enough for now. Um, and then that is it. So what I want to do is export this.